metrics, logs, and events. That is a very special trio. Can you tell us a bit more about that, Alex? What are your thoughts on that special trio? We could start with the abstract and then we can work down into the technical nitty gritty. So those mm -hmm. three that you mentioned just so happen to be the pillars of observability. All three of those are the three pillars of observability. It's theorized that if you have all three of these pillars in your app, you've achieved the coveted observability and all your SREs and your DevOps people in your organization will come and shake your hand and mm -hmm. all will be well in the world. But um, uh, <laughs> jokes aside, the idea is that these three different types of observability tools yield different benefits for your application. So with logs, if you're capturing uh, logs in your applications or your services, you can see you know, in very, very you know, nitty gritty detail what's happening on every single request, what's happening you know, if there are errors, if there are warnings, if you're having trouble connecting to other services, you get very, very fine grained detail as to what's going on. This is super awesome and uh, it's very helpful to have this very in-depth information. The problem is that you can kind of be inundated by too much information and it's very difficult to kind of extrapolate higher meaning out of all this nitty gritty uh, detail. And then if you've ever run like an elk stack and had to administer that, you know, the pains of, you know, trying to index all this data, you know, then you might say, okay, let's only log what's important. And I'm sure people with production apps have had their DevOps people come to them and say, hey, let's dial back the logging. It's a little too much. And it's Elasticsearch is just keeling over. So, you know, then, then you reach for other tools like metrics, you know, metrics eventually find their way into some sort of a time series database. And they're usually pretty efficient in comparison to logs because they're more bounded, right? You have a measurement, you have a timestamp, and you have some labels associated with that. You know, a little asterisk there because that kind of depends on what your time series database of choice is. But that's that's kind of roughly speaking what, what goes into capturing time series data. So given that you've pared down what information you're capturing, you could start a lot more efficiently and it's a lot easier to query and you can keep these for way, way, way longer periods of time. But the problem is there that you've you've now traded off you know high fidelity logs for you know explicit metrics that you're capturing over time. So again, trade off, and there are different tools for the job, and you, you kind of reach for for what's best at that particular point in time. And then traces is kind of like a, a merger of the two logs and metrics, where you can see how long your application is sitting in different parts of the application. If you're making uh, external service calls, how long are you waiting for those external service calls? If you have something like Istio set up and you can track, you know, requests across services, you can see how long it takes to, you know, bounce across service A, B, C, and D, and how long it takes to unroll and go all the way back to the original caller. And then again, you get some metadata associated with those traces and timestamps and stuff like that. So again, all three of these are different tools. They have some overlap, but it's really a matter of picking the best tool for the job. And it'd be nice if you have all three of those in your, you know, in your company or application. But uh, in the real world, it is tough to get all three of these stood up and, and running efficiently and, and running effectively. 